Hi, welcome to the Benson Williams Proctor Arts Institute. My name is Sarah Smith and I'm the Assistant Professor of Photography at Pratt MWP. And I'm gonna be here today to talk to you a little bit about my work that's been included in the Celebrating Suffrage uh, Women Artists from the Collection exhibition that's currently on view and will be on view until January. Um, first, I just wanna thank curators uh, Mary Murray and Miranda Hoffelt for, for choosing to include myself and the other full-time women faculty from uh, Pratt MWP in this exhibition. So first I'm going to just tell you a little bit about myself and my work in general. Um, I grew up in Middletown, New York and then my family moved to Kentucky when I was 10 years old and so I've split my, my life between living in upstate New York um, and living in Kentucky in the south and a lot of that really has played into um, a lot of my ideas that come into my work. So a lot of my work has been tied to uh, the landscape of upstate New York uh, and the landscape specifically of the area around the Great Sacandaga Lake which is just about an hour and a half from where we are right now. My grandparents owned a house uh, that they had bought as a tiny cabin um, without running water, without electricity in the 60s and with my grandfather and their eight children built out the house to be the sort of beautiful lake house that was enjoyed by um, my grandfather grandparents, my father, his siblings, and now their grandchildren. Uh, years ago, um, my grandfather passed away, and so the lake house has now sort of changed hands. It still remains in the family, but my relationship to that place has very much changed. When I was a kid, my parents divorced when I was very young, which is what sort of prompted this move to Kentucky. And it wasn't until years later that I returned to New York and got to sort of come back to this lake house. Um, I'd been gone for quite some time and I felt, um, I would say I felt sort of unfamiliar even with my own family and it took a lot for me to feel like I was being brought back into uh, the the sort of fold of the family if you want to talk about it like that. And so, um, so it took many years for that to sort of happen, uh, but from that first kind of coming back into this space, um, the people may have changed some, but the thing that really hadn't changed at all was the home and was the landscape of the lake that I had grown up around. And so a lot of this work, um, this this work here comes from a body of work called God's Country, which is a body of work that I've been shooting for probably my whole life, it seems like, because I, even as a kid, would go to the lake and photograph and re-photograph. Um, but as an adult, as I've come back to it, I've been photographing it kind of with this idea that I knew that my relationship to the place uh, would change eventually. So when my family and I came back to New York and I sort of brought or was brought back into this place, right, I was becoming more familiar with my family again. And the one thing that hadn't changed at all was the landscape of uh, that surrounded the lake um, and my relationship to the home itself. So the landscape, the lake, the Great Sacandaga Lake has been a real focal point for my work for many years now. Um, it has been what I sort of consider this um, continuing constant uh, within my life. Um, and that I think also plays into the way that we think about how water moves and that, right, the, the idea that you right, can never stand in the same river twice, right, that it is constantly moving and changing. But it has for me been the one thing that has felt like it has remained the same. So that's why that it's become this main focal point of the work. So I've been photographing this place for many years and um, really in, in a larger sense, my work is really about the kind of uh, photography's both ability and inability to preserve um, moments, to preserve our present. 
um, photography is this thing that kind of tells us, you know, through the medium to be present um, in the moment, to be able to look at the past as if it is the present. And I think that photographs also have this really keen ability to tell us something about the future as well. Uh, so in my work, I'm really looking at the way in which we attach memory, that we attach nostalgia, the way that we um, sort of rely on the photographs to tell us something about ourselves, to tell us something about our past. So with this work, um, like I said, this work comes from a body of work called God's Country, which is about sort of my relationship to the lake, my relationship to my grandparents and the home that they inhabited for um, most of my life. Um, when my grandparents passed away, um, because they had so many children, and as happens with death and money and uh, belongings, that there was a lot of kind of turmoil wrapped up in their belongings at the lake house. Um, and I was asked what, you know, what I wanted from the home when my grandparents passed away. And really I couldn't think of anything in particular that I wanted. Um, I did end up with a few small things. Um, I ended up with these rugs. I ended up with our life vests, the, the, ch the children's life vests that were hanging in the garage that were very moldy and gross um, and a few very small items. But in general, I wasn't really interested in acquiring anything from the home. Uh, so when I went to help with some of the clean out, uh, there was a shed that had um, a whole bunch of stuff that nobody was really interested in and was mostly about kind of just emptying that space. And in there I found my grandfather's uh, canvas Navy bag from, from when he was in the Navy. And within that were rolled up um, several of these rugs. So these are uh, rag rugs, which rag rugs became really popular um, out of necessity, kind of on the, uh, the beginnings of World War I, sort of scarcity of money, scarcity of materials. And rag rugs were made during this time um, from just end scraps of fabric. So you would collect these end scraps and then weave them into a rug. So these rugs were made by my great grandmother from end scraps that she had collected. Um, so when I was emptying out this canvas bag of these rugs, I sort of laid them out um, into the yard and uh, Everybody in my family that was there thought they were disgusting. <laughs> and I thought that they were just so beautiful and these really beautiful objects that were made by hand, made uh, from necessity by hand that had been you know, created by my great grandmother. Uh, so I inherited these rugs and they were kind of stuffy and I let them air out for days um, outside, but, uh, but they were really, really beautiful objects that I'm excited that I've been able to hold on to. So this piece is called GG, um, which is you know, abbreviation for a great grandmother. And what I did is, um, because of my relationship with photography and my interest in um, recording, right, using the photograph to record as a means of preservation, and these rugs are not in very good shape. They're not usable because they're, they're so old um, and they've been in a shed for a really long time. So I have, um, right, using sort of photographic means, as a way to preserve this, I laid out the rugs and kind of documented them kind of inch by inch, kind of going down. This piece is from a, a very long sort of hallway rug, so it kind of spans across, um, you know, three pieces here. Um, but so I photographed them, right, as this means of kind of preservation of the rug itself. So with these rugs, right, I photograph them um, as a way to preserve them. And I chose to photograph them in this way that would almost mimic the way that they look in real life. So I photograph them with a kind of flatness, right? So I'm like shooting directly over top of them. 
as a way of kind of almost making the photograph pretend to be the object itself. And that's something that I also think about in a lot of my other work as well. And I think photography is this, is this medium that photographers have to come to terms with flatness a lot in their work. So whether that means a kind of flatness um, by taking a three-dimensional space and compressing it into a two-dimensional space or the way in which a photograph can um, compress the way that we see space. So making us believe things are closer or further apart from each other than they actually are. And so photography is really, really, um, you know, a huge part of it I think has to do with light. And then also there's a, a sort of sense of space and flatness that occurs as well. And so with these and with other pieces that I've made, I really kind of exploit uh, photography's ability to deal with flatness. So when you look closely at the photographs, there's, um, you know, it, it almost on first glance looks like I've cut these rugs and placed them in the frame. But really then when you look a little bit closer, you sort of see that, um, that it's actually a photographic image that has been printed to scale to also kind of help with the, the belief that, um, that this is the real thing. So God's Country, which is the body of work that uh, this piece comes from, uh, takes its name from, right, like God's Country is usually a term that people use to talk about um, the sort of bucolic uh, rural spaces. And God's Country is a term that my grandfather would use to talk about uh, his his lake, uh, as, as he so claimed. Um, so, so it takes its name from, uh, from my grandfather, from this term, God's Country. Um, but really, the body of work was um, sort of developed over a long period of time where I was photographing, um, photographing the house, photographing the landscape over and over again over many years. And so, I, my relationship to this place um, was always about a kind of acknowledgement that my relationship to this place would change eventually, that I would no longer have access to it in the same kind of way that I did when my grandparents were living, um, that their belongings would um, soon sort of not be accessible to me as well. And so I spent a lot of time kind of photographing just like every inch, every corner of their home, and then also photographing the landscape as well. And so, you know, the work that within the, within the larger body of work, there are a lot of images that repeat, uh, that there are places that I'm revisiting time and time again. Uh, there are objects that hold significance that uh, find themselves repeated throughout the work as well. Um, I photographed a lot of, you know, my grandfather's very shoddy uh, Christmas tinsel decorations that he would scotch tape to the ceiling. Um, the bedspreads that were, you know, it's a lake house, the uh, sort of ratty bedspreads that, you know, everybody had slept under at one point. And so it really becomes a collection of images about texture um, and about their objectness. So um, the flatness that kind of comes in a lot of the images also shows up as well, because it really is about a kind of recording of these things um, as a means of preservation for the future. Thanks for listening to me talk about my work today. Like I said previously, that the exhibition is open until January, it's been extended. And so I hope that uh, you find time to come and visit us in person at the Munson Williams Proctor Arts Institute. And thank you again uh, to the Institute for including me in this exhibition.